Do you guys think you have what it takes to tackle this drum coordination challenge? Have you checked out drummers like Steve Lyman, Marcus Gilmore, and Dan Weiss and wondered like, what the heck is it they're doing there? Well, the answer to both of these is the subject of today's lesson. You guys, I'm talking about ostinato beats. Ost what? Ostinato beats. Where one part of your body does something over and over and over again, and you layer some creative stuff on top of it, sort of like this. Now, that might seem like utter voodoo to you guys, but I promise you in this lesson, we're going to stair-step our way into it. And we've got an easy and a more advanced version. The hardest coordination exercise ever, slash, play ostinato beats like Marcus Gilmore, Steve Lyman, Dan Weiss, Eric Harland. Today on 8020, stay tuned. And dudes, if you were hoping for a transcription of today's festivities, I'm sorry to let you down, but we totally have that. Psych. Had you go in there, didn't I? Just click the link below the player, enter your email address in on the next page to download it. F R double Elmo. First, let's talk about exactly what an ostinato is and what our goal is with all these crazy coordination exercises. So I'm going to introduce you to two ostinatos here. And an ostinato just means a pattern that repeats and doesn't change. So a rock beat is a type of ostinato. Right, you play that, it doesn't vary. But in the case of getting these sort of Steve Lyman, Marcus Gilmore-esque solos, we're going to do something more like this. And if you're wondering what that was, don't worry, we'll get into it. But for every level here, I'm going to give you two ostinatos. So we're going to do this at the sort of basic level, and we're also going to do it at the advanced level. And either way, it's going to be a coordination challenge. So the first ostinato I'm going to give you is just this. One, two, three, four. Etc. That's your basic ostinato. The advanced one goes like this. One, two, three, four, five. And just to make sure you guys are hearing that, I'm going to click quarter notes in five, and I'm going to play the ostinato. So one, two, three, four, five. So it kind of sounds like like a heartbeat, but it's a heartbeat in five. So the other important thing to talk about is we're going to do some coordination stuff like playing idioms that are congruent with the ostinato. So if it's in four, playing things that are divisible by two, four, and eight. Playing things that are against the ostinato, so like counter rhythms. And we're going to show you some orchestration things like... And what I want you to keep in your head is that the goal of all of this, yes, it's to expand the level of what you're able to do coordination wise, but ultimately it's just to be able to improvise over this stuff. So you can play things like this. Okay, when we come back, we're gonna start you off with what I call congruent phrases. But let's take a quick break. Okay, now let's get into the what we're gonna play. And we wanna start first with something I call congruent shapes. <gasps> What's that? It sounds abstract and mathematical. Well, just remember, Thomas Hawk probably talks about it. So it's metal, sort of. Okay, so we're back. And the first thing we wanna do is learn to play phrases that are in clave with our ostinato. So remember our four ostinato? I'm gonna give you a couple things to do there, but the most obvious is just accented eighth notes. So three, four. So 
So that's a one beat phrase of two eighth notes. So of course it fits within that four. But what if we want to do a two beat phrase that's four eighth notes? Well, it's obviously going to fit right within it again. So three, four. Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit interesting. You can take those congruent shapes and alternate the accents. So for our eighth notes, we can put the accent on every second eighth note. So that'll sound like this. Two, three, four. And I messed up. I think I'm supposed to have the hats on all four. Let's try it again. Three, four. And for the four eighth note groups, the two beat groups, you can do this grid thing. You can put it on second, third, or fourth, eighth. So you could go three, four. Okay, you might be wondering why I'm not yet talking about switching the hands, so like. Because in order to switch from downbeat to offbeat, you have to play a non-consonant phrase, a three-beat phrase, and that's a different category. Other things you can do with consonant phrases are orchestrate them, and orchestrate them interestingly. So let's take our two eighth note phrases again, and let's use the offbeat accent. So three, four. So let's see what happens when we move that accent around. And I'm gonna start randomly and then I'm gonna do something I think is interesting. Three, four. Okay, within the space of like six minutes, let's see what the time index is, maybe less. We've already got you into some Marcus Gilmore, Steve Lyman territory because what you're doing is using the orchestration to create an implied nested shape within the other shape. I'm sure Steve's got a better word for it. But you're playing eighth notes and you're playing in four. So to keep this lesson short, you have the basic tools there. These are congruent shapes in four. Okay, let's talk about congruent shapes in five. Remember, we're going one, two, three, four, five. 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 One. So the only congruent shape with that that doesn't cycle over the bar line is just going to have to be five eight. So if the ostinato is, the congruent shape is going to be two, three, four, five. Or you could just do one accent. So two, three, four, five. Or maybe something like two, three, four, five. You can make any shape you want as long as it repeats at the same rate as that 516. So how do we vary this exactly the same as the other one with permutation and orchestration? So let's just start with the 516 pattern with one accent that lines up with our downbeat. So we can grid that so that that accent moves around, right? Two, three, four, five. Etc. That was just the first four. So one other shape I like within this range of possibilities is just the accent with the pickup. So that would just be one, two, three, four, five. And just like the other ones, you can shift that around within the bar. So you can be two, three, four, five.
And just like the example in four, you can also orchestrate that. So we'll choose the really simple example. One, two, three, four, five. It gets even cooler when you're doing like a 16th offbeat. So four or five. So that's the first really, really broad category of things you can do. I've given it to you both in four and in five sixteen. When we come back, we'll talk about non-consonant phrases or counter rhythms. Those are phrases which repeat at a different rate than the ostinato. And those are the ones that are the most fun. Okay, you guys ready? It's time for the hard part. I'm gonna do non-congruent shapes, by which we mean non-related rates, by which we mean any other mathematical jargon you can come up with. It involves multiplication, you guys. Are you scared? Let's take a look. Finally, to close out this ultimate coordination challenge, best you can't play this type lesson, we're gonna do something that's extremely Marcus Gilmore, Steve Lyman, Eric Harland, Dan Weiss, which is to play non-consonant rhythms or alternate rates. So what do I mean by that? I just mean, say you're playing in four and you've got a phrase that's three eighth notes long. Three, four. And that's gonna repeat when we do some math at the product of the two rates. So what do I mean? We have a phrase that's four beats long and a phrase that's three beats long. Four multiplied by three is 12. So it's gonna repeat every 12 beats. So that means it's gonna repeat every three bars. So check it out. One, two, three, four. Right? So three is kind of the most obvious one to do when you're playing in four, but I'll also give you a five, which will just be. Let's hear how this sounds in four, two, three, four. So those astute among you may have observed that was five bars of four or 20 beats, which is the product of the two phrase lengths, four multiplied by five. We're getting into math, you guys, math music. <laughs> so the same tools that were available to us before are available to us now, orchestration and weird rate orchestration too, where you repeat a pattern across a number of surfaces that's not congruent either with the original pattern or the counter pattern, and then you really get into crazy territory. So let's try that with the five note counter rhythm. So two, three, four. So there you go, that's an interesting one. Where it gets really interesting is when you double the rate. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you have one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So that'll sound like this. Two, three, four. Make interesting phrases with that. Let's try it with the five, two, three, four. Of 
course, when you're improvising, you can change from one phrase to another, and you can also delay the rate at which you play it. So you can go. So you're still thinking in that 516, but you're only playing the accents every other time. So three, four. Okay. When we come back, we're going to look at this with the hardest possible ostinato, which is the 516. Let's go. And actually, this was supposed to be one section, but it got so long we decided to break it in half. I'm jumping in to remind you guys that you can download the free transcription of everything in this lesson by clicking the link below, entering your email address in on the next page, and we'll send it to you scot-free. Now let's tackle those challenges for our crazy 516 beat. Okay, so we're back. Now we're gonna apply the non-consonant rates to the 516 ostinato. Remember that one, the heartbeat? Heartbeat in five? Everything but five works for this. So you can slow it down and you can do two note ostinatos. So let's try it. Two, three, four, five. can do four note ostinatos. All of a sudden, those are odd because they're against the rate of the five. So two, three, four, five. And you can do three, which I think sounds the funkiest. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Remember when I was talking to you guys about playing the eights, like, and I was saying, we don't necessarily switch at the beginning because that's throwing a three in between our fours. So when you improvise, you're going to start to combine these, but you could do like a seven, which is a three and a four combined anyway. But I think the quickest way to stair step to this is to learn a lot of these related rates and then just start improvising and play as simply as you can, so. Etc. So I'm going from dead simple stuff in and out of these exercises. So if we were trying to make the funkiest possible easily learnable example, what we'd probably do is take the three note counter rhythm and play the accent every other time and then start orchestrating that. So remember, the three note would be two, three, four, five. But say we play that every other accent, so. Right? And maybe we switch the drum. And I really like using the ride symbol. I think it sounds really funky. So let's try to do something interesting there. Two, three, four, five. Etc. Anyway, hopefully that's a window into how you start to approach some of these Steve Lyman, Marcus Gilmore ostinato beats. Hopefully that's one of the more challenging coordination exercises you've ever faced. And hopefully that's how you get the gig. Well, dudes, hope you enjoyed that. This was honestly one of the ones I've had the most fun filming in the past couple months. So I hope that translates. Related rates slash math metal stuff slash Steve Lyman beats. Hope you enjoyed it, dudes. Enjoy these a lot. See you again next week in another lesson of the week.